All right, guys, starting with this lecture, we're going to be getting a little deeper into Blender's panel system, starting with this uh, info panel at the very top of the screen. So if you go to the very top, uh, the info panel is going to go all the way from the left to the far right of the screen. Uh, it's going to look kind of like a system menu. And uh, you can drag it down a little bit, and you can see some of the system commands here. Um, this is going to output some of the commands that you perform in 3D. Uh, it's useful for debug purposes. And if you ever get into Blender development or using the Python scripting engine within Blender, um, some of these things in here are uh, things that may be of interest to you. So uh, I'm going to drag it back into place. Just know that it's there. Um, I'm not going to go over all the options, but I will show you the ones that I think are, are important when you're first starting out. So uh, when you are in the panel systems, realize that all the panels can change uh, and be altered to suit whatever needs that you have within Blender's interface. You can completely rearrange the screen any way you want. Um, so by default, this info panel is at the very top of the screen. If you wanted to change this to something else, you could uh, go to this far left icon. It's uh, right now set to the info icon, and you could change this to any one of these and then alter uh, this panel to be something else. So let's get into it. The file menu is the first menu you see in the info panel. Uh, if you go in here, you're going to recognize most of these commands because you're going to be able to find them in software that you use uh, on a bunch of other uh, things in your computer. So uh, if you want to create a new scene, you can come up here to the new command. You can open a scene of someone else created or that you're going to modify. Um, save a new one and uh, do things like import, export models, uh, link objects, things like that. We'll get more into how these sorts of things work when we get into managing the scene, uh, building models, things like that later in the course. Uh, you can come in here and quit the program down here. And uh, the only other thing that's really handy right now in this uh, menu to, to know about is this user preferences uh, button that you can find here. If you click this, it'll open up uh, all of the settings that um, will change how you interact with Blender. And you can really uh, come in here and do handy things like set up custom keyboard shortcuts, change the way that Blender's theme. So if you don't like the colors, you can fix that. Um, set up system paths and uh, change settings with memory. So if you want to optimize Blender for uh, the type of system that you have, you can do things like that. And uh, I have an entire lecture set aside for going through each of these panels and discussing uh, key options within them that I use. And uh, so we'll learn how to set this up later. Uh, let's move on to the next menu. It's the render menu. Uh, you'll remember rendering from the section in the uh, first lecture that we had where we discussed uh, the last process in the pipeline, which is the rendering process. And if you remember, rendering is just the process of taking the scene that we have here in this 3D viewport, rendering it out to a final image or uh, an animation. So uh, this menu will allow you to come in here, render an image or an animation. Uh, these options are to do with uh, quick preview options that you can see within the 3D viewport. It won't be a final render, but it'll be a quick render. And uh, this will show you the last render that you currently stored in memory. And uh, this will allow you to play back an animation. So uh, these are handy options. Um, I usually don't use this menu. I come over here to the properties panel, which we'll discuss later. And uh, I use the render settings here to, uh, to go through here because I feel like it's a little more intuitive. So uh, be aware that within Blender, uh, if you're looking for settings and buttons to, uh, to navigate with, uh, even though you may find them in one menu, uh, typically, there's buttons for them around, and as always, there's probably a keyboard shortcut that there there is uh, set up by default in Blender, or you can always create your own. So very handy. Um, this window panel is very useful. If you've got a dual screen set up, it's going to be really handy for you because you can come in here and duplicate the window, and uh, if you drag this off, you can see that you'll be able to split the interface onto two separate views, um, and uh, completely rearrange. Um, the uh, the layout so you can do two separate things at once. Uh, the help menu is the last menu we'll go over here and uh, it's basically all the same information you found in the splash screen uh, in the link section over here. It will contain the main manual for Blender and uh, a bunch of other stuff on the Blender website so when you get a chance definitely get in here and check out uh, different sections of the Blender site. There's a lot of useful information on there especially when you are looking to uh, get deeper into Blender and expand your capabilities. 
um, this button's really handy. It switches the screen layout that you currently have set up. So like I said, Blender's fully customizable, meaning you can come in here and uh, change the settings around, change the panels, and change the, uh, the layout of the view to uh, anything that suits your needs for your project. And uh, we'll go over some more specifics on how to do that manually, but if you wanna come in here and find a quick way to change the layout, you can drop down this menu. It's currently set to default, but if you go through here, you can set it to these presets. And so if I was gonna be compositing, I could set this to compositing. It'll bring up the node editor, uh, render view of the camera, uh, image editor, things like that. And uh, this will lay it out so I'm optimized and ready to composite. Uh, same thing for scripting. If you're a programmer, you can come in here and write your own scripts for the Blender itself. Game logic for building games within Blender. And uh, you know, you can get the idea. So uh, this is really handy and you can also create custom presets by clicking this plus icon which will allow you to uh, rearrange things the way you want and then save it by clicking that as a custom named uh, option. So I'm gonna go back to default. Um, the next one over is the scene dropdown. And uh, so here's what this does. If you're in Blender and um, you've got a scene set up, it's gonna default to the scene right here, which is just called scene and it contains these objects inside. Uh, if you were in a more complicated project, you might have multiple scenes listed out here. You can create scenes by, again, clicking that plus icon. And uh, what it will allow you to do is uh, set up a scene, an animation, uh, whatever kind of shot that you have in this scene right here. You can give it a name and then create a new one. And what it will do is clear out everything that you see in the 3D viewport here and change it just for that specific scene. So you can get a work on this scene switch to another one, uh, work on that one, and it will allow you to organize your, uh, your, uh, your file and keep things in order so that you can work on multiple shots or uh, what have you. Um, this dropdown will change the current render engine that Blender is using. For the purposes of this course, for uh, the introduction, we're just gonna be using the Blender renderer, and uh, there's so many things you can achieve with it. Um, that some of you may learn the Blender rendering engine and stick with it for the uh, longevity of your career, depending on the kinds of things you're using Blender for. Um, if you get more advanced in Blender, you can change this to the Cycles rendering engine. And uh, a lot of people now are using the Cycles rendering engine because it's, uh, it's newer and uh, it's a lot more advanced and allows you to create a little bit more um, photorealistic looking uh, renders. Uh, quicker than you could do with the internal rendering engine. So last thing I'll go over is uh, this section over here. It contains information about objects that are found within the 3D viewport right here. So uh, if, if you look at the scene, you can see that we've got these three objects, which you can see uh, are listed here. Each one of these has a name. So if you uh, click through these, you, uh, you can see that the, the name of the object is listed here. And uh, you'll see various other pieces of information about the scene, such as how many vertices are in the scene completely, how many faces, triangles, objects, etc. Um, memory is uh, just showing you how much memory the scene is currently occupying. So be aware that as this number continues to grow, um, if you are working in something with uh, a really heavy model in terms of geometry, it, uh, it may start slowing your system down. Uh, it just depends on uh, your system settings. So be aware that that's always there uh, to kind of give you an idea of, of how much memory you're using so you can keep an eye on that and uh, keep things rolling. So guys, I wanna thank you for listening to this lesson. Uh, that's it for the info panel. And uh, the next section, we're gonna be covering a, uh, another panel and uh, I'll see you there.